What's up guys, Dog Polk here, and today we have some interesting information coming forward that leads me to believe, in my opinion, that Tom Dwan is involved in yet another high stakes debt scenario. But before we jump into that, I got some interesting stuff to show you. I first want to talk about the Dirt Challenge. Now, this is something that I think people that have been in poker for a while all know pretty well, but I have a lot of newer viewers on this channel that have not been around for the last six or seven years in poker who don't know exactly what happened, and I want to set the record straight as far as what the facts are. Tom Dwan issued the Dirt Challenge in early 2009, where he said he would play anyone in the world not named Phil Galfond at Heads Up Pot Limit Oma or Heads Up No Limit. The blinds for the match had to be at least 200 400 which has a $40,000 buy-in, so these were already some pretty high stakes, and you had to play 50,000 hands. At the end of the 50,000 hands, whoever was up money would be awarded an additional side bet, where Durr would put up $1.5 million, and his opponent would put up $500,000. So you would, you would effectively get 3-1 to one on the bet, in addition to the stakes you're already playing. So this is pretty much... These are pretty much the highest stakes we've ever seen online, and people were excited to see this go down with some opponents. Tom Dwan's first opponent was Patrick Antonius, who he bamboozled for $1.8 million, and with 20% of the hands left to play, they agreed to settle privately, and we don't know exactly what happened, but it's safe to say Antonius had to pay most of, if not all, of the side bet. Next up into the ring was Daniel Cates, otherwise known as Jungle Man. They agreed this time around to be playing Texas Hold'em rather than Pot Limit Omaha, but everything else about the challenge would remain the same. I actually managed to find a chat log from before the play started, where Durr essentially said to Jungle Man, hey, you need to send the money to Phil Ivy before we can start playing, and then I can talk a little bit of shit. Now, what's interesting to me is if the players both agreed to send to Phil Ivy, and I don't know the specifics of that, but it's weird to me to have an escrow for only one player. I mean, saying, hey, send to Phil Ivy so we have the escrow in place so that we can start playing, when you yourself are not going to send to Phil Ivy, is a little bit sketchy. After Ivy had received Jungle Man's money, they started off playing, and from there, it was all Jungle Man. You could tell, as someone that was a heads up element expert, Durr was clearly outclassed, Jungle was a much better player, and quickly he started running up a pretty serious lead. Over the course of a few months, they played a lot out of the gate, then a little more rarely, but they did manage to play a decent amount of the hands, and I believe in year one they ended up playing around 10 to 15,000 of the total amount of hands. Over that course of time, Jungle Matt had moved up to around a $1.1, $1.2 million lead, and was looking to be in great shape to take the whole bet. Unfortunately for Daniel Cates, things were about to get a lot worse. Tom Dwan started not playing very many sessions, and when he did play, oftentimes the session was quite short. He started to seem to always have other things that were more important and was constantly busy, sometimes even playing in other games online that he felt had priority over playing against Jungle. Well, after six to eight months of very little action, everyone took a hit with Black Friday, with PokerStars full tilt on Ultimate Bet all going down and the Dirt Challenge seeming to be on permanent hold. After Black Friday, things continued to get worse, with Tom Dwan basically never playing jungle over the course of the next couple of years. Ultimately, Full Tilt Poker did come back in 2013, at which point Tom Dwan played 62,000 hands, but only 2,500 of them against Jungle Man, so the challenge was still at roughly a standstill. Tom Dwan continued to not play and be busy, and things screeched to a halt with Full Tilt once again going down after PokerStars acquired it and decided they didn't want to continue offering games. Since then, Jungle has constantly been optimistic that they could continue the challenge, but Tom Dwan ends up just not putting it up. So, I'm not sure where it's headed in the future, but at this point it's 2017, this challenge started in 2010, it's pretty safe to say it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Over that course of time, Daniel Cates has been very optimistic with their chances of finishing the challenge. In fact, in July of 2015, he announced they would be completed within nine months, and I'm not sure any hands were even played, I'm pretty sure none were. At some point, it becomes a situation where Tom Dwan needs to forfeit the bet, and this is why you have an escrow. This can't be just drawn out indefinitely, because the thing is, when you do make this agreement to play the hands, you have to have an intent to play them. You can't just offer a challenge, finish it when it's convenient, like with Antonius, and then with Cates, when you're losing, just go MIA and be way too busy to finish your agreement. 
An interesting point that doesn't seem to get brought up much in the world of high stakes is should Phil Ivey have some responsibility in the payment of his debt? Now, there's a couple ways that it could have gone down. I want to address each of them. If Phil Ivey publicly agreed to be the escrow, talked to both parties, said he would receive from both people, received from Jungle, and then didn't from Tom Dwan and said, don't worry, buddy, you're good for it. In my book, Phil Ivey's on the hook for $1.5 million. The whole reason you have an escrow is so that when both players agree to a bet, they have a neutral third party to send the money after somebody wins. That's the whole point of having the escrow. If you say you're the escrow and then you're buddies with someone and you don't have them send the money, you have a problem and the escrow should be on hook for the amount. Now between the escrow and the player, obviously there should be some responsibility for the player too, but the point remains, this is why you have an escrow to begin with. If Tom Dwan just told Jungle to send to Ivy and didn't really talk to Ivy, then I would put it squarely on Tom Dwan. You can't just make someone an escrow and now they're liable if they haven't agreed to it with both players. So I'm not sure exactly who is in the right or wrong there, but it is a point that should be brought up more that if Phil Ivy did publicly agree to it, he should be on the hook for some of the debt. If you're a fan of Tom Dwan, I understand where you're coming from. You know, when I was younger and I was starting poker, I looked up to Tom Dwan too. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, Tom Dwan has been a poker hero for many people. But there's a difference for when someone's your hero and they're a shining beacon of light in the community, and then refusing to admit that they can do anything wrong in the, in the poker world. Tom Dwan is stiffing jungle in this challenge, and he's been doing it for years. And if you're going to refuse to believe anything going on because you've always been a fan, well then you're not living in reality with what's happening. I'm also sad to see that this has happened, and look, I hope they finish it, but at this point, I think there's almost no chance of that happening, and this is one of the largest scams in poker history. Now, this segues into our new story that we're going to talk about, and I want to kick it off by looking back at a podcast that Heraldus Vulgaris did with Joe Ingram about a year ago. Let's take a look. I have a funny story for you, though, actually. I don't know if you want to. But it involves a poke, like a former NVG superhero. I'll say that. I won't mention his name. But this is like the closest to me getting rolled by someone conned. Let's take a step back and think about how many people that can be because it really isn't that many people. You know, who are the NVG heroes that could have done this? Tom Dwan, Victor Mom, definitely a superhero. Patrick Antonius, Phil Ivey, Phil Galfond. I mean, who? what other superheroes even are there? You know, like Doug Polk? <laughs> So I had a guy, and people can maybe speculate in the chat as to who it might have been. Um, I won't say who it is, but this person either lied about having a big account that we could bet. So this guy owes me a lot of money, this person I'm talking about, like seven figures. Uh, and he was placing bets for me through a bookmaker who either existed and didn't pay him. Well, actually, no, the, the, book, the bookmaker definitely existed. So anyways, I had this guy who was making bets on my behalf, this NVG superhero. Uh, and then I haven't gotten paid in, since like 2013, since it happened, or 2012, I guess, 2012. And so now I'm wondering if the guy even actually made the bets or if he just didn't actually make the bets with the bookmaker. The bookmaker didn't exist. Something happened. I don't know. It's a weird situation, but I'm wondering if people can actually guess who it is. I'll be shocked if people know who it might be. Well, it's not E-Dog. People think it's E-Dog. Yeah, yeah, it's not Eric Lindgren. No, uh, it's, it's, Tom, 2005. It's, Tom Duan, it's Tom Duan maybe in the, in the realm of possibility for this one. I mean, I'm not going to say who it is. It's not Eric Lindgren. Is it Tom Duan? No, I can't, I can't say who it is. Well, it's not E-Dog. It's Tom Dwan, maybe. And I'm not going to say who it is. The reason he says it's not Eric Lindgren is because Eric Lindgren owed a lot of people money for not paying off his sports bets and uh, fantasy sports bets and all that type of stuff. So it wouldn't be a surprise. But who could it be? Hey. But I will say that this person is basically one giant excuse after another as to why he can't pay me the money that he owes me. And he could have been booking me. And if he was booking me, it's a little dicey because I don't know where he was located at the time, but I do think that bookmaking would be very, very bad for this person. I don't know. 
it's interesting. I don't know if he was just placing the bets and forgot to place them or didn't place them or did place them and lost the money betting something else, was booking me. I don't know. I'm not sure who it could be. But What's, what's Full said? It's just slowly hitting her all about that the guy didn't even place the bets. I think he placed the bets, but you could certainly make the argument that he didn't and he could be, I don't know, it could be dicey for that person to be doing such a thing, to not be placing bets when they say they are. That's almost like bookmaking. I don't know. That's weird. Hmm. So what, what are repercussions in the situations like this? Because obviously you've told Eric Lindgren's story a bunch of times on different various outlets. And what happens in this situation? This guy owes you seven figures, allegedly. What, 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 what? Well, he doesn't allegedly owe me seven figures. He owes me seven figures. Okay. Well. He owes you seven figures. The, alleg- the allegation, he will confirm this, I'm sure. Just want it to be noted, this is not clickbait. It is a seven-figure scandal. You can just ask Haralibus. What is the situation? You can't do anything about it. Like, what are you going to do? Threaten to out the guy on Chicago Joey's chat. That's probably about it. Good. Make a blog post. Um, you could, I mean, I don't know. You can't really, you just got to hope that at the end of the day, someone is honorable. And the other thing is this person shouldn't not have, he, sh- you know, he should be able to pay you. Like he should, it doesn't, appear to me that his lifestyle has changed in any way. In fact, you could argue it's gone the opposite way. He's still in action. He's still doing things. Why is he not paying you? So, I don't know. You can't really do anything. I'm, hmm. I could sue him, I suppose. I don't know. It'd be a weird lawsuit. Wow. Yeah. Do you have a lot of these people that owe you this, this six, seven figures? No. He's the only one that's still around. Um, how around is he? I got to give a shout out to Joey here for really fishing for some information. How how around is he? How around is he? How around is he? No, he's the only one that I still that I'm actually owed uh, owed owed money from. I'm owed money by like lots of people, but it's all very very small manageable account amounts that they're paying. The thing is, like, when you're a successful gambler, you're always going to be owed. You're very rarely going to owe, right? Because you have to make a point of paying people when you lose. Otherwise, you can't, your reputation is ruined. And the side part of that is you're also probably not going to lose very much. So, Well, you guys can speculate that. Oh, they will. And they did with a lot of people in the comments thinking it was Tom Dwan. Now, Tom Dwan does fit the description. Currently around. Still in action, high stakes games, NVG superstar, but you can't just jump to conclusions without really having any proof. At the end of the day, it seems likely it could be him, but it's hard to say. We really don't have any information past that. In unrelated news, Heralibus tweeted yesterday, Hey, at Tom Dwan, been trying to get a hold of you. I'm sure you can guess why. Can you message me with your correct contact information? Now, many people tweeted back at Heralibus attacking Tom Dwan with a mixture of jokes and attacks, but I think it's a little early to jump the gun. And here at Polkerhand Productions, we have a team of lingual experts to decipher this tweet and put it into language we can all understand. Hey, Tom, the tennis courts are going to be closed tomorrow. Should we meet up on Friday instead? Hey, Tom, I'm going through a really tough time right now, and I need someone I can talk to to help me out. Hey Tom, how come you can't make meetings like that DJ kid from Sweden? Now Tom Dwan isn't one to tweet very often. In fact, before yesterday, he'd only tweeted five times in about two years. But after the Heralbus tweet, he sprung to life on Twitter with a series of tweets. USA Five Eyes Signals Intelligence is supposedly way better than the rest of the world. I don't like Trump. But people are wrong to think he's stupid. He and his surrogates are setting the stage, but there's a clear fact they are missing. If the CIA and NSA had the ability to spoof Russia or other state attacks, either he's an idiot, he's not, and he's nowhere near as smart as a lot of you, his supporters, seem to believe. I mean, that pretty much says all of it right there. Uh, like, not much more needs to be said. Look, I can't tell you that the person that owes her all of this money is Tom Dwan because I don't know for sure. But what I can tell you is that he absolutely scammed Jungle. He fits the bill on the description from a year ago. And Heralbus tweeted a basically where the fuck is my money tweet. 
A lot of evidence there to support that theory. I'm going to continue to to watch the story develop. I hope we get some more information in the future. I hope maybe Heralbus comes forward to comment on who actually it is. But until then, thank you for joining me today. And I'll see you guys again soon. Isn't it kind of weird that I keep asking you to subscribe? What's the media want you to think that I think you want me to subscribe?